Hi, this is Sean, and as promised, in the diminished dominant voicing lesson, I'm going to show you some places where I would and wouldn't use those particular voicings. So if you missed it, I'll put the link in the description. And I'm talking about these sorts of voices where you have C7, a C7 here, but with a raised C, so it's actually a diminished chord in the right hand. So the kind of places I do want to apply that sort of thing are on dominant chords, they're not for majors, minors, anything else, on dominant seventh chords, which means anything with just seven after it, nothing else. Let's make some marks. And they should be going home down a fifth like this to major or minor. If those things are in place, then I particularly will look for that diminished voicing. As long as it works, we'll see some other things about that too. But that kind of thing should be fine. And secondly, the melody note should not fight with it. We'll see if we can find some areas like that. An example of where a melody note would fight with it would be if I had a G7 with an A natural in the melody. Because the voicing we're talking about puts G7 in the right hand in any inversion. So here's G7 in the right hand. And if I had an A flat, fine. But if I had an A natural, that's going to fight. So I wouldn't do that. So we've got to make sure we haven't got a natural nine or two in the melody. So yes, we're looking for dominant chords that go down a fifth to major or minor. Here's another one. A7, is it going down a fifth? Yes. Is that down a fifth to major or minor? Yes, it's to minor. So I'd look to um, put a diminished voicing on that A7. Is this G7 going down a fifth to major or minor? No, so let's just leave it. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. There are some maybes that come about, and we don't have to we don't have to worry about them when we're getting used to the basic stuff. It's fine. Let's see what else. D7, is it going down a fifth to major or minor? No, so I'm not going to worry about it there. G7, now this one is a maybe. You'd have to know more about music. But in this case, we kind of could, and I'll explain why, but don't worry if it's if it's too complicated for you at the moment. But in the key of C, E minor 7, chord 3, 1, 2, 3, actually means the same as C. It has that same function as C major, so in this case, I might do it. Um, but if you're not sure, don't worry about it. So this one would be okay for me. But let's, you know what, let's stick with the safe ones. A7 to D minor, yep, that's down a fifth to major or minor. It's down to minor, so for sure. G7 here, turnarounds like these are good places because we have so much space and freedom. That's going to go to a C, so yes. And that's the first eight sorted. So let's see what happens. D minor 7 to G7. That would be an ordinary G7 in the right hand. We're going to raise this so it becomes diminished, D diminished in the right hand. Here's an ordinary A7 in the right hand. We're going to raise this so it becomes diminished like that. G7. Nothing on there. Nothing on this D7, certainly not a diminished voicing. There's something else there. We're leaving this one alone. A7, yes. G7, yes. So these are nice, simple places to start to apply the diminished. Look for dominant chords that are going down a fifth to major or minor. If they're going down a fifth, but they're not going to major or minor, for example, if they're going dominant to dominant, I don't think we have any in this tune. I find those areas to be maybe areas. Most of them don't work for me, some of them do. So I find it best in teaching just to stick to these simple areas and you'll start to sound good. Hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.